Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Betty, for the introduction. And I personally look forward to the day when you introduce Madam Rajavi into our yeah, council yeah, of discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as always, colleagues and friends, it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. And again, we're considering the plight and suffering of those wonderful people in Ashraf. And again, we confirm our support for their struggle for freedom. Their cry for assistance and understanding from the international community must be heard. Not just here in the safety and comfort of the British Parliament, but throughout the world, where decent people and their governments must hear their call for justice and freedom. Their plight and suffering from the oppression and cruelty of the public politicians of Iraq, of Iraq demands that we who have a voice use that voice, as Betty has just said. We have a voice, let it be heard. Many times this group has heard of the conditions of the cruelty, uh, the cruelty that exists and that have been inflicted on the people of Ashraf, and there's no point in going over. In fact, we've just heard a, a description of Camp Liberty being like a concentration camp, exactly the words I put down for these notes. As the conversion of Camp Liberty is in undergoing um, what the high walls and the, the fences into a concentration camp, at the very time this is going on, we learn today from Baghdad, we have this man who is the representative his name is Daniel Afar, the Mullah's regime, uh, he's the agent in the, the ambassador in Iraq. He is actually saying to the world that Camp Liberty will have people in there from the Mullah's regime. They will be in residence as the people have moved in there, if they go in there, they will be alongside people who are there just to spy on them and to pass that message back. To the innocent, to, so that the people in, in Tehran can persecute the innocent relatives of those people. That's the sort of people we're dealing with. They're already saying they're going to be there, so everybody's going to be looking over their shoulder if they go there. So we can understand, we above all people in this democracy, as our chairman has said, we know what it's like to have oppression on our doorstep. It's not too long ago, it, I, I, I get... I sometimes get criticised for talking back, <coughs> but there are so many instances where we have seen cruelty and inhumanity and the world has kept silent. Oh. It mustn't keep silent any longer on this. And I looked to my friend who I met yesterday, Wes Martin, from the United States. Our limited voice here has got to be backed up by a very powerful voice from the Secretary of State <coughs> and Hillary Clinton's got to get off the fence and start saying the things that we've been saying for years. These mullahs in Iran have got to be stopped and the people of Ashraf by association have got to be free and allowed to live decent lives. Obviously they can't go back to Iran at the moment but there's many places in the world where they would be much safer than where they would be if they were in that Camp Liberty. Two years ago, Betty, we were in one of these rooms and we were talking about the appalling situation over that Christmas period. And then we saw the Arab Spring where we actually believed that something could happen in Iran as well as those other countries. But it's a bit different when you're dealing with a regime that is so well used to killing, hanging, torturing people like the mullahs in Iran. So I'm, I'm not terribly surprised that the Arab <coughs> uprising didn't get as far as Iran, but it will come. Now the PMI have been uh, proved to be right in the courts here, and in Europe, and I believe in some of the courts in the United States. People are, those of you that weren't here during the period when we were getting a British government, people went into secret documents and they were told that these people were terrorists. But when it came to it, the senior judge of this country said, there is no such evidence. These people are not terrorists. And so I say perhaps to Wes, through you Chair, that when you go back, the Secretary of State and the people around the Secretary of State can be reminded that up to now there is not one shred of evidence that says these people in the PMOI are terrorists. And I just hope that it, though, 
own voices will be heard. Uh, Madam Chairman, it's my call today, as it's been for a long, long while, is that we continue our pressure on the British government, because the new government, as I said a few months ago, was much more receptive than that the, my government was in some of the things we were trying to do. I just feel that our voice has got to be louder, but I do again call upon our dear friend Wes to go back home to America and tell, him, tell the people there that without their clout and without their push, we're still fighting an uphill battle. And I thank you for listening again today, and I wish you all success in whatever you do. But always, the people of Ashraf will have our support collectively to see that their misery is brought to an end as quickly as possible. Thank you. Mm.